Hi, it's Katie, and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to ferment my garlic. I got this big bag of garlic from Costco, and there's no way that I could use all this up before it sprouts or goes soft or something. So I'm going to ferment it, and I'm fermenting it primarily to have it preserved. So it will be um, peeled and ready to go, and I can take out a few cloves at a time and chop them up. Okay, so I've peeled as much of the garlic as I'm going to peel. I have some of these really small ones from in the center of the head. What I'm going to do with these, because they're not really even worth it to peel them for this, is I will put those in the freezer, and then when I do things like cook beans, I can throw a few in. That way I can fish them out, just throw them in whole and fish them out when the beans are done. Or something else you can do um, is throw them in with the skin and everything into your pot of boiling water when you're boiling potatoes for mashed potatoes. And then after the potatoes are tender, the garlic will be tender and you can kind of squirt it, like a little squeeze packet, um, squirt it right into the potatoes and then mash it all up together and you'll get uh, like garlic potatoes. Um, but right now I have, this is probably about a quart of garlic cloves. So um, from that big bag of garlic, that's how much I got, but that should last uh, quite a while. So I'm just going to put these little guys in this and put this in the freezer. Now I just need to make the brine solution to pour over my garlic cloves, and the brine is just salt water. So just mix some salt and some water together, and that will give you the brine solution. So to make the 5% brine solution, I'm just going to use 5 grams of salt for every 100 grams of water. So I'm going to put my vessel on my scale, turn it on, and it should say zero. So the weight of the vessel is teared out. Now I'm going to add 1,000 grams of water. So I got 1,001 grams of water, that's close enough. And to this, I'm going to add 50 grams of salt. So I'm going to tear this out again so it says zero. And then I'll just add 50 grams of salt. Now I'm just going to stir to dissolve that salt in the water. Okay, once the salt is dissolved, I'm just going to pour it over my garlic cloves. All right, and you want to add enough that it can cover the garlic cloves by a few inches. And my garlic cloves are floating, so I'm going to weigh them down. Okay, so the garlic is floating. So what I'm going to do is use something to weigh down the garlic. The best thing, the easiest thing, is to use a cabbage leaf. I don't have cabbage leaves, so I'm going to use celery. And I'm going to sort of make a raft where I put the celery pieces in here and put them side by side so they make a flat surface to hold down the garlic. I might need to trim this piece. So just put celery in there, making a raft that will hold down the, um, the garlic. Put one more little piece here. Okay, and then I'll put one more across the raft to hold all of the pieces of the raft together. and latch your jar down. That all of the garlic and all of the celery is fully submerged. And if anything comes dislodged and starts floating on the surface, see, like that, that's not good. You wanna go ahead and fix that. So tuck it back down underneath, or if one of the garlic cloves becomes dislodged, it might be easier just to remove it. I'll wedge that down in there. Close it back up again. And it looks good. Everything is under the brine. So now I'm just going to let this sit on the counter to ferment for probably about three or four weeks. I want to give the good bacteria a chance to really get a foothold in here and then when I move it to the refrigerator it will slow the fermentation down even further and give me an even longer window where I can use this garlic.
give you a quick look at the garlic. This is, I think, day six. It's been nearly a week, and there's bubbles all over the place. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. Um, if you look closely, that garlic clove I need to put back under. If you look closely, it's fizzing like soda pop. Tiny little bubbles come to the surface um, pretty much constantly. And then there's a lot of bubbles clinging to it. So if you do that, then they come loose. So there's so many bubbles that it maintains a pretty good um, amount of bubbles on the surface. It's not quite a scum yet. If it was, it would still be okay as long as it's not molding or anything like that. Um, and the liquid is slightly cloudy. If you can look here where it's just the liquid, it does look a little bit cloudier. The celery is also starting to get yellow, that's fine. You could actually um, eat this celery once it's done. It might be very garlicky, but um, you could cut it up and add it to a recipe if it's not to your taste. But I'm going to go ahead and get that one piece of garlic either back under, or I might just take it out and go ahead and use it. Um, but that's what the garlic looks like on day six. All right, so it's been about three weeks and I wanted to show you the garlic. I'm just getting ready to put it in the refrigerator. I think that it's fermented enough that I can go ahead and put it in the refrigerator and continue to use it. Um, I wanted to show you an example of blue-green garlic and luckily mine has turned blue-green. I've done a couple batches of garlic. I also add whole garlic cloves to other ferments and I've never had one turn blue-green, but these ones are turning sort of this greenish color. It's perfectly normal. This happens with fermented garlic and even pickled garlic. It's just the sulfur compounds in the garlic reacting with the acid that's in the liquid. So whether that's vinegar in a pickling brine or in this fermented brine, there's the acidic um, lactic acid produced by the good bacteria. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the fridge. You can use the garlic cloves just like fresh. You can um, chop them up and cook with them or you can chop them up and eat them fresh in salads and things like that. Uh, you can also use the brine. It's really good in marinades and salad dressings and things like that. If you use the brine or the garlic raw, it will also add sort of a probiotic content to whatever you put it in. So if you make a salad with it, um, then you're just increasing your probiotic count. If you cook it, then it will most likely kill most of the good bacteria, but you'll still have the great garlic flavor. And then these celery that have been holding it under the garlic, they've done a good job keeping everything submerged under the brine. Those will also be really yummy snack. Probably very garlicky, so I might chop them up small and add them to some egg salad or something like that. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in fermentation, I have a whole playlist of a bunch of different veggie ferments and um, sourdough and beer brewing videos on my fermentation playlist, which I'll link down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.